Kiitos Ari Ervasti ja Hannu Tynkyreinen tästä opaari haastattelusta ja nyt sitten vaan odottelemaan uusia opaari hakemuksia. Ja omasta puolestani varmaan kaikkien meidän puolesta toivotaan oparille kaikkea hyvää. Kiitoksia ja tervetuloa. Jatkuvat, mistä puhuvat Asko Kirjola ja Petri Tuulemaa. Seurat jatkuvat. Laulamme virren 178. Virren jälkeen seurapuheen pitää veljemme Asko Kirjola. Virsi 178. Test one, two, three.
otamme näitä seuroja ja luen täältä Continue these services and I will live read from Revelations chapter 20 first a few verses and I John saw the holy city New Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven prepared as a bride adorned for her husband and I heard a great voice out of the heaven saying behold the tabernacle of the God is with men and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people and God himself shall be with them and be their God and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death ne neither sorrow neither crying neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away and he that sat upon the throne said behold I make all things new and he said unto me write for these words are true and faithful amen beloved brothers and sisters before we go through this text again I would like to bring to you loving loving greetings from the US believers United States believers I returned Tuesday from a trip there and was able to serve them and they asked that I bring love it, loved greetings I was able to experience on this trip this uh, Holy Spirit and that we believe in the same way this our text is from the last book of the Bible this is the second to last chapter of the Bible this tells us how Apostle John I cannot say for certain was he the same disciple of Jesus many have said it this way but anyhow he was Apostle John who was uh, banished to the island of Patmos why was he banished there for that reason that he was a believing man he was banished due to his belief and what because he spoke preached of the gospel but brothers and sisters you can think that you are alone in this barren island where there's no other persons maybe some animals that the meaning of that is that the that John the Baptist is to die there that we can take one more servant of the kingdom of God out of service this was a, a difficult time when there was persecution of believers think about what happened one Sunday morning when John there in by himself walking on the island I think that he probably had lots of sorrows on his mind one that he's by himself there's no one else close by and other also that knew that there are beloved brothers and sisters that are being persecuted and killed out there when we read from the first chapter of the revelations there was some uh, miraculous things happening John one Sunday morning was in spirit I think that he experienced some very strong feeling of the Holy Spirit some presence some comfort and all of a sudden he heard behind him a, a great sound like a bassoon and he turned to see what is this sound and he sees seven golden candlesticks and these candlesticks in their midst there in the midst is 
a form of Jesus Christ. And the Bible tells that John saw this and was frightened and fell to the ground. But then also continues in the Bible that this John felt a strong presence of Jesus placing his hand upon John's head and saying, be not afraid. I am the first and the last. In heaven, John was not forgotten. In heavens, his situation was known and God had a special plan for John. And John received the task to write uh, everything that you see here in this island of Patmos. Beloved listener, I am approaching you that especially you have not been able to make it to these services. Maybe one who is alone in your own home, walking in your house, in your yard. Maybe you are far away from here in this homeland of Finland and you feel and you feel that you are to totally alone. In heaven, you also are not forgotten. The Lord of Jesus Christ at this moment, also in the same way as he put his hand upon John's head, wants to put upon your head where you may be at this time. You are in comfort and mind. Do not be afraid. You risk receive all sins forgiven in Jesus' name and precious blood. It is comforting to be there when you know and feel that you are remembered in heaven. This, our text begins with the words, which can be heard in the, same, in the following way. And I, John, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Beloved brothers and sisters, what did John get to see here? He was able to see, able to see God's living kingdom, that living kingdom, which we also are gathered here in this Opisto services, this congregation, God's congregation, the Bible also writes, as Apostle Paul uh, writes in that Jerusalem from which is above is free and is our, each of our mother. Beloved listener, can there be more beautiful words in this world than mother? We all have beloved memories of our own mothers. We have those that have mothers still living, S small children, boys and girls have mothers and fathers living. But then many of us here are also having that mothers have moved from this time to everlasting. We remember this loving mother that always took good care of us. That mother who washed cleansed, took in our lap, and forgave. This God's kingdom, living kingdom, is mother upon. We have this. We can be in the comfort and care of our congregation mother. Here in the Opista services, we have able to come here to be in the care of our mother, to be nourished by our mother, and to be cleansed by our mother comes to mind here now from the Old Testament prophet, prophets, book of prophets, Zechariah writing where God's prophet Zechariah was tired. His journey of faith, he was tired as many of you probably feel that sometimes that the journey is weak that do we have the strength 
to still continue. But it's written in this way that the angel which came to, to me again woke me woke me as if from some sleeping slumber and asked, what do you see? And I respond, I see a golden candlestick. Think this prophet saw this God's living kingdom of being of pure gold. Do you, beloved sister, brother, see this kingdom uh, of believers as as precious as a candlestick that is of pure gold i think in this way that this type of candlestick which is purely made of gold not very many of us would be able to purchase such a candlestick this is how god is picturing this congregation this living congregation this children of god in which the children of God in which midst we can travel. We love it, brothers and sisters, that enemy of souls who tries in many ways to make us fall. And when the sin takes over in ourself, this golden candlestick may seem there may be some dark dots. There may be some flaws we can see in this kingdom of believers, children of God, we can travel as putting our sins away and we can maintain this candlestick as beautiful and precious. Think brothers and sisters, in this group, this congregation, we can travel with this congregation. We can one day this congregation, this grace, heavens, we find our way to heaven. This, our text continues with the following words. And I heard a great voice out of the heaven saying, behold, the tabernacle of God is with men and he will dwell with them and they will be his people and God himself shall be with them and be their God. It's spoken here that this room of God, this living congregation in the Bible, we have read about how this this congregation of God, this kingdom of God is built, made, built on a stir, sturdy foundation. It's built through the prophets and apostles onto the foundation where, where Jesus Christ is the cornerstone. The, the foundation of the kingdom of God is not to crumble. It will hold sturdy till the end of time person people have not constructed this it is the construction of god and will last until we have been called to from this time to everlasting this foundation is so strong what are the walls constructed of in this kingdom of god the bible is saying that it's constructed of living stones, the children of God. And I have heard it's been said that old brothers or bro old brothers have preached how this wall, these living stones, how they are, are different shapes and they're not the same size and the same shape and the same appearance. They are, they are constructed with the plaster of love, the Holy Spirit, and the love is connecting us to one another. And then when we look at this wall, this full completeness, this is the way of God's kingdom. It is love that is in the presence and 
central in the midst of this kingdom. Jesus teaches that keep lo love between you. This is how you disciples are known. It is important that we guard this, this love between believers. And when we approach one another, we know that we are all weak and faulty. We are all sinful. We can give to each other, to forgive to each other our mistakes in advance. As the Bible instructs, take care that you are getting along with one another and forget each other. How important even today in these services there is the gospel in our midst. You loved mothers and fathers, grand grandmothers and grandfathers that have come to these services. Remember to use this gospel in your own homes. How it's important to ask for forgiveness and to preach the forgiveness and always when when that faith in small children, boys and girls is cared for with the gospel. It is important that we are preserved in our faith. Without the gospel, we do not have the strength to travel this journey. But when we read this Holy Bible, it's the Lord Jesus Christ teaching us upon this earth Many times, the Lord Jesus Christ ended his speeches in the way to say, those who have ears, hear. Here in this book of Revelation, Revelations, when John was given the task to, to relate to the seven uh, Asian congregations, they ended in this way, those who have ears. Listen to what the Spirit has to tell the congregation. It is important that we are attentive and listening to the voice of the congregation mother, the instructions of the congregation mother. The children that are listening uh, and ob obedient are blessed. This has been said. Timothy wrote to Apostle Paul in the way to say, if, if I am not soon in your presence, I want to remem remind you that how you must travel in God's room, in God's living congregation, which is the truth, the foundation and pillars of truth. This is what we say, the congregation, living congregation, is a fighting congregation. Our, these congregation members, children of God, are sinful persons, prone to sin, fall into sin. But this kingdom of God, this is holy. Why is it holy? It is holy as this congregation is, is affected by the Holy Spirit. The Holiness is not of us people, but it is of Christ, through Christ, through through Christ given to the congregation. And even today, this living Christ is through his spirit in the midst of this golden candlestick in this congregation of believers. In God's kingdom, every, Everything has been given from heaven, those gifts from heaven, so that we can be preserved in our faith. And when we think about these services, how many gifts are used in serving in these services? How many gifts are we serving? This people of the kingdom and God's meaning here is that God's congregation could be fed this heaven's food. 
and that we would have the strength to proceed in our faith, preserve our faith. Our text continues as, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. This portion of God's word is beautifully speaking of heaven. When we think about the heavenly home, we do not have any pain. We do not have suffering, no sorrows. But God is even the last tear from our eyes. But in the first place, this is not describing the joy of heaven, but it is also meant for this time. Just think this way, loved brother, sister, whom has received grace of repentance from the world, you remember that moment when God had awoken your, your conscience. You remember how the sin was burning upon your conscience, how death was frightful, and how you were not able to sleep. This same uh, thing is being told about in, written about in Psalms. David wrote about David when he had fallen into sin out of living faith as that the sins were every day in front of my eyes. Your hand pushed firmly upon me. My bones were broken and my my liquids were dried up. If somebody's in this type of heart condition that God has awoken their conscience, then death is frightening and it feels that life is so difficult. How can I get away from this weight of the sin? And when this beloved person, you remember this, when you received the sins, sins forgiven, repentance through Jesus' blood and precious word, you were freed from through the Spirit, Holy Spirit rested itself upon your heart and you had peace on your heart and the fear of death was removed from your heart. You beloved sisters, brothers, you for sure will not forget this day when you received the grace of repentance. I think that especially here in this turn, speaking turn, beloved friend, whom is maybe listening through the radio and listen through the summer and you feel that you are still missing this this living faith sins are burning your conscience now is the time of grace now is the time even this moment it is allowed to believe all sins to, forgiven even unbelief in jesus name and precious blood when you believe in this way, you can move into this God's kingdom, this God's living congregation, and can, as a child of God, travel on this way of faith. Beloved brothers and sisters, in the midst of this world, we notice how this world is around us violently frothing. People in this world are fearful. What is coming to this world? 
how comforting it is in this room of God, in this God's living kingdom. We can hear, be, and be near each other. We can comfort each other, give us each other support, and with the gospel, bless each other. And I thought when I moved, came to these opista services, I looked in my garage and there was this bird nest of a sparrow. It was full of these small sparrow boys and they were closely to each other, right next to each other. How the mother bird always brings food to these small birds. The brings in its own mouth softens the food and then gives it to the small bird. I thought, what happened to the little bird who does not open their mouth, does not take the food? This ready softened food from the mother bird. Pretty soon shall be that this small bird will die and sisters, beloved, it's important that we again and again can go to this table, this feast table. It, it is never felt, this food has never felt bad, what is provided in this room of God. It's the same familiar food. It's that gospel from which we get new strength to travel on this journey of faith. I thought in, in that way that, that uh, our God's congregation, this table, food table, is prepared here in the same way as the prophet Hezekiel spoke about a temple which was a picture of God's room. In the temple there was an altar as here also there is an altar in God's room and and in the book of Hebrews it's written go always to, with strength to the altar of grace when you need help. This prophet Ezekiel is talking of the altar on the right side of the altar he noticed is the living water of life flowing flowing from the right side of the altar this water of life went underneath the foundation of the temple to below to the sea of grace. Here in these opistal services, this flow of living uh, water, it is flowing so low that even the weakest, most weakest, the, the poorest can take partake of it. Beloved brothers and sisters, even this moment, it is allowed to believe your sins in Jesus' name and blood, in Jesus' name and precious blood, in Jesus' name and all sins forgiven, all sins forgiven, Jesus' name and precious blood, sins forgiven and Jesus' sins forgiven, in Jesus' name and blood, sins forgiven in Jesus' name and sins forgiven, in Jesus' name and precious blood. Dear, dear brothers and sisters, is, isn't this wonderful, this grace room, in the midst of this room, could there be a better place where we can take a rest, where we can be with one another, close with one another? We are fed here. We are cared for here. Brothers and sisters, dear ones, this is this kingdom of God's children has stopped here in Rais Yarvis, Opis services. But one day there will be the day that this this group 
shall fly to, towards heaven, towards the heaven where we have no need. God, that is what the Bible has told us. There's a few thoughts in it. It, it is not no one's ear has not heard or eye has not seen and no thoughts has risen that God, God has prepared for those who love him. In Revelations, when he looked at the group that had made it to the end, the Bible said it was such a large group that nobody could count it. When John tried to form it into words, his words could not could not say how it was heard, that th thankful noise, that thank noise thankfulness. That is that how is the heaven for which we are we are traveling. And I especially would like here at the end of this sermon always uh, also remind you beloved children, small boys and girls, not your dear young ones that have come to these services. You can also believe all sins forgiven in Jesus name and precious atonement blood. And all you dear young ones, I want to say a few words for you. When you are living in this time of the world, you are on the front lines uh, fighting uh, with, with against the enemy of souls. Make the effort to come to the listen to the word of God, and put away sin when it's when it's when you fall into it, Dear, beloved young ones. Be uh, of support for each other upon this way. We remember you all beloved young ones we want to comfort you and support you and to encourage you to believe but even before this sermon is ended i would like to remember you you at home at home services that is listening to these services perhaps in a, next to the sick bed maybe you are waiting for that moment that the angels shall, shall take you away to heaven. You can even to that place, to this moment that you are in, remain in faith, all sins forgiven, in Jesus' name and precious blood. Remain, brothers and sisters, in Jesus' name, remain in faith, making this travel as there is a great reward for this faith in heaven. I would like to also ask, may I also remain in faith, all sins forgiven. I wish to believe with you. And as we believe in this way, we will find our way to heaven. We say in Jesus name, Amen.
beloved dear guests, service guests, listeners of the word. Let's stop for a moment. That word of God, which is written in Matthew's seventh chapter, verses 13 and 14. With that prayer that God would opening his word and brightening his word for us. Enter ye at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there will be which go in threat thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Amen. Beloved listeners of the word, we have already the beginning of August and we have been able to hold many large service Opista services, summer services. You condensed, we have been able to listen to abundantly the word of God. Have you thought that what is spoken about here in the services? Or maybe you friend who is listening to these words, you have been listening to services, but you feel that you don't belong in this group or you don't maybe know what this, this faith is being spoken about here. Or you young one who thinks, should I go to services? Or how is my life of faith, my matter of faith going? It is spoken about the good God here in the services. Spoken of good, our good Lord and Father and how people can live in God's care. How a person is taken into God's care and into God's kingdom as a inhabitant of God's kingdom, how one can find the kingdom of God and how one remains in the kingdom of God and when and how this, trip, this path leads that God has intended for us people. It is safe to go to services and, and the most important matters of our lives are spoken about in services. This portion of the Bible also is talking about this same topic. Where is God's kingdom? How is God's kingdom? Can it be inhabited? And where does the path lead. It's also speaking of an alternative road, an alternative path, an alternative con congregation kingdom. In the Sermon of the Mount, Jesus himself shows that a person has two alternatives to be either one or the other kingdom inhabitant, the kingdom of God or the enemy of soul, the ruler of this world, their kingdom. There are no other choices. It's spoken here about these, the gates to these kingdoms. In the first verse, it's spoken about this wide gate. Where does it lead? This 
wide gate lead to to this worldly kingdom, the kingdom of the enemy of souls. And Jesus says, says that many go through this wide gate in this wide road. As, as we know, and it's sorrowful, even though this call to God's kingdom belongs to all, the great majority of the people of this world have chosen or have been led through this wide gate. It's easy to go through this gate. Through God's word, we understand this. How does it look, this kingdom, where this wide gate leads? Doesn't it appear where, such as in school or at work, wherever in the surrounding world we travel, there is normal life, normal people. You probably surely know good people, and perhaps those type of people you think, the type of people that are not maybe so good as they are, are doing things that are not in the benefit of the community. But mainly, people live peaceful and normal lives, take their children to daycare or to school. These familiar and not so familiar people go to work and bake food and eat and sleep. And if it's the question about the president or, or some orphan child far away, person, maybe someone who doesn't have such a good portion here and as we have here, mainly in Finland, all of us people have, have based on God's word, the same word. God has given the life, of, the gift of life and created life. Person. That is why each person in front of God each person is of the same worth, just as they are. And the type of life situation they are, it, there is only one price for a person's life, and it's the, the most fulfilled price as all equal and precious. But is life life the, the same as what God instructs if you have gone through this wide gate and wide path. Isn't it so that uh, through time it feels that especially in this time in even here in our homeland Finland humanity has changed many things that have been thought in consensus as to be bad and not to be good for a person, which has often come from the foundation of the Bible, the, side, the Word of God, slowly changing to normal life, normal life. Person, mind, the human mind has created its own words and rules and boundaries and has the human mind has created its own normals and sin has become acceptable sin has changed to normal life this is the type the type of thing that is that are not good for people based on god's word and is not uh, uh, to god's will when a person lives as an unbeliever, this kingdom of the world, as an inhabitant of 
the world and the wide gate. Sin is not sin. It does not awaken the conscience. It doesn't anymore. It does not anymore feel wrong. But the person, I think, as we understand from the first words of the Bible, did God really say, say so? to question the word of God in the will of God and want to, in our minds, think that this is not so bad because it feels to me that this is okay. The human mind is prone to this type of dumbing down the conscience and rejection of God's truth is it that we people can decide for ourselves what is good for people, what is right and what is wrong in front of God, what is sin and what is not sin. Is it so that we have a list of things that we can define, our, define ourselves if it's appropriate. Who defines and who decides what is sin? Isn't it it, the Lord Heavenly Father? Not even us believers or unbelievers do this decision ourselves. Is not something that we decide if in front of God's face something is okay or not. Isn't it so that God himself is the one that knows this and decides this? This time is special, special time when it feels is it any matter, whatever matter, from the perspective of humans and through the logic of humans have been thought that everything is acceptable. There is no nothing that can be can, can be forbidden or has no foundation to do it. This is against the word of God. If you think about those own friends and family that are living normal life and think that that person says that they believe in God. Another thinks that I believe I am believing. I want to go to heaven or there are people that maybe don't have any faith and feel that they have, uh, in a temporal sense, a good life. How do we know that this is the correct faith? And where is God's kingdom? How, how do we know? Jesus, people have asked, is it so that only seldom are saved? Is this so? Many times in the work life or traveling, when I see many different types of people, different type of cultures, have you sometimes thought, or even here in this homeland, how is it that this such all good. How is it so that only us who are believing in this way are saved and find our way to heaven? And only we are believing in the correct way. How can we know? In this question, question presented to Jesus, it was asked, is it true that only seldom you are saved? And in that also, Jesus referenced this narrow gate. There's only one way. There's only one God's kingdom. There is only one 
God's kingdom from which, for which is open through this narrow gate. You might, listener, remember, and probably most remember, from the Acts of Apostles, it is spoken about Saul of Tarsus. Saul of Tarsus was a wise man. He had gone that type of schools that he knows all scriptures and all teachings of the Jewish world, probably by heart, and was God-fearing on the appearance and believing in God on appearance and wanted to live in that way and do what he thought was the correct way and that of the will of God. In that, the world of that time is difficult to understand for us, but there was this persecution of believers, Jesus and his followers. Saul of Tarsus was extremely active and strong in that he wanted to destroy this wrong teaching that had followed Jesus in his understanding and in his understanding were mocking of God and God's word. Then Saul, this learned man, when he was moving towards Damascus, he knew there was these followers of Jesus is the person that needs to be thrown into prison and, and eliminated. And he was, got permission to go there, and with some friends he went there. When Saul approached Damascus, what happened? Here in the Acts of Apostles, it's said that from how from heaven there came a great light that blinded him, and there was a voice Saul, Saul, why persecute thou me? Saul asked, Whom are you? And the voice replied, I am Jesus that persecuteth. It must have been a very difficult situation for someone that believes they are believing correctly. And, and what I'm doing in my mind is correctly is and trying to serve God's will. And then happens that all of a sudden, Everything is changed in life. Saul was asked to go to Damascus, to the straight road. He was taken there, blinded, couldn't see anything. He was taken to wait what would happen. And it's told that he didn't eat or he didn't drink and breathe it. He was, for sure, very fearful and shocked. God appeared then to Ananias, a believing man, and asked him to go meet Saul and to bless him. Ananias feared and rejected this idea as he knew that Saul had done so much persecuting to believers. But God encouraged Ananias to go to the right street to meet Saul and to bless him. Saul 
got to believe his sins, unbelief, and all sins forgiven. He got to hear the gospel. He got to hear this jo joyous message that is even in these services and in all times have been told to the whole world, to the persons nearby or through the internet and the radios, to the whole world, this same gospel that you may believe your own sins for, and unbelief forgiven in Jesus' name and precious atonement blood. It's told that Saul eyes open. He got to see again. And he got a new life, his life back, but a new life. Previous sermon also was mentioned that you whom has maybe received the repentance from outside of the kingdom have experienced that feeling which is that faith has filled the heart once after it has been destroyed. Is it the way of the prodigal son? Or the, when the peace of God is filling the heart, Jesus says in many parts, my peace I give unto you. I don't give that peace which the world gives, but my peace I give to thee. To the heart, build God's peace, not the hardness of peace, which gives gives acceptance of sin, which is is from unbelief. It's good good to be. This gate is narrow, so you you cannot go through through your own works or your own learning or a good life or any other merit. Apostle Paul, through, through works, and Saul, Saul, was, Saul was transformed into Paul, who was a weapon against the world. And Paul made, did this work to the glory of God and his previous learning and other merits did not help them anymore. But he had to humble himself. God had stopped him, had blinded him, and led him to, to God's narrow gate, where he had to bow down and throw all his own to make his way through the gate and simply through God's grace to accept the gospel and believe onto his own heart that can believe his sins and unbelief forgiven. It's, there is only one faith in this portion of the Bible. It's told seldom find you find this narrow gate and following verses. It's also stated that everyone who says, Lord, Lord, does not make it to the God's kingdom. Those who do God's will are taken. There are many portions of the God's word which tell about this, how this world there is a lot of different teachings, but there is only one way and one gate. There is only one faith, and there is one holy God's kingdom. Where is God's kingdom? God, or Jesus is asked in this way, and Jesus replies, God's kingdom is not here or there that we could see it. But it is in your midst. God's kingdom is where there is a belief first. The boundaries 
are from heart to heart and God's kingdom, the sign of God's kingdom, is the peace of God that comes from that you have God's Holy Spirit in your heart. Sins are forgiven. There is living faith through the work of the Holy Spirit, the strength of the Holy Spirit. This Holy Spirit is, which is God's is is the mark of God's kingdom. Sometimes at work, I have thought when there's a situation, maybe a tens of person, a few believers, maybe five or more, thought that, yeah, here is God's kingdom in our midst. I can feel how heart to heart the boundaries are held. And God tells, or the heart tells where the boundaries are. It's comforting to receive this is around me. Other believers, other believers, as also, also said, greetings from America. We, I have myself, can gone, lived there, young family, when there was same boundaries of God's kingdom. It was the same faith, same congregation in the midst of this great world. It's comforting. This is found as Saul, Apostle Paul, found God's kingdom. God can wake and feel as he did for Saul for you unbelieving friends are not a inhabitant of this it's encouraged search and and you shall find knock and the door shall be open the narrow gate is not closed in the book of king uh, the doors will be closed against The time, time of this day will close, but today, this today, call is coming to you, or you who have given up your faith, young or old. This call is, is also for you, beloved friend, who has your faith on your heart. Ask, and you shall receive. That ask from the Lord. Faith, ask for, for the gospel so that you have strength to believe. It shall be given, as Jesus has said. It is given that living water. This road is narrow, as Jesus here says. The road is narrow. What does this tell us? The road is not so narrow that two, two could not travel side by side or with, with side by side, even on, against a stronger front. This is a happy road. This is the road of life. This type of road that brings life, brings life, brings comfort to life brings trust that God has, is with us, taking care, care of us, even if the road is difficult to travel, we have God. Isn't it so that you, you and I, believers, through the eyes of faith, understand that this is the normal life as in the beginning surrounding world appears to be living a normal life. So when faith is on the heart and God's law is written to the heart and the Holy Spirit is giving guide what is right, what is wrong, and how I make choices in life. When God, when the world 
is calling and tempting, and the white gate is seen as the wide road appears that that would be easy. Would be easy. I think about in my life that maybe this would feel good. Wouldn't couldn't I just do this? Then this living faith in the heart, this God's spirit guides that now you are walking away from this narrow road. Stay on this comfortable road. That sometimes it may sometimes seem grassy or difficult to struggle, but stay on this road of faith and live as God's word instructs us, as the con con congregation is teaching us. Yeah. We live as God has intended for us and, and tells us here in these services in all forms in which God's word is spread tells about this that what is good for people work. Then you can own this peace and this happiness. This is said in God's word. This is the most precious of gifts. Treasure that is people have. The most precious thing that person can own in life. And this is the deepest secret of life. Of source of joy. When there is peace unto God. And lead a normal life in the trust and care of God can believe all gray steps, doubts, sins forgiven, even in this moment, in Jesus' name and precious blood to the peace of the soul and freedom and joy. What is this? this joy of the soul, the freedom of the soul, that one has been able to go to the end of one's road, to the end of this narrow way, and found their way to the destination, can inherit this inheritance, which the Word of God tells us, road leads to life. Then it, the time is present. There are no temptations. There are no doubts. There is no sins. There is only good to be. We have found our way to God's or to the heavens kingdom to the destination where Jesus lives. Jesus has now, through His Spirit, is with us today where he says in his word, two or more are gathered in my name. I am there in their midst. It's many times this world such that at least for me, doubts and temptations can make me tired. I have thoughts. How can can it only be this small group? Is, it, is this the, the real faith? Why couldn't one live and try different things that the world teaches? Would there be some compromises? Maybe a little we could change this our faith and these take something that seems appealing from the world. Is it so tight? But when we stop in the midst of this word, it is clearly taught to us in, in, in God's word that there is only one world. There is more than one. There is only one road of life that brings the joy to life to yours and my soul. 
the soul receives peace. The soul receives joy. And God's angels in heaven are celebrating when someone finds their way to the narrow gate to find this place. There was a summer service. There was one brother stating about a family story, how one unbelieving couple had given up their faith, received their in summer service. So we say, oh, return, return grace of repentance, receive repentance and forgiveness of unbelief. They received the gift. This name, grace name of God, the child of God, and mother and father were joyous of occasion and how great was the joy and for the whole family and for the person making repentance and how it was able to see this joy about how beautiful things could happen. This touches everyone. Young ones say, as people of faith, what they might have said, it wasn't my faith. This faith, everyone, young and old, isn't this our, all of our thing? This is everyone's, all persons. Thing. God, Jesus gives here two. All you can be an inhabitant of the gods or the kingdom of heaven that has come through the narrow gate, or you can be the inhabitant of this world, this unbelieving world, and in the kingdom of this enemy of soul. And what is the difference? This God's kingdom offers what this world this kingdom of the world, even though life may seem normal and good, it is all the road leads to destruction, as it's stated in this text. But what does this narrow road do? This narrow road leads to life, gives Fulfillment to life and save savior, savior and beloved listener. Which road are you traveling? The motto of the summer service. We thought of. Jesus asked, oh, "Am I loved by you?" You can ask yourself, "Is, is, God, is Jesus here to you? Do you want to live?" Road of life, beloved, travel companion, leave all travel, doubts and temptations and sins forgiven. You unbeliever who might leave hear this word through the speakers, you that always preach the same way. Even in Saul's way, believe, unbelief, and all sin forgiven. In this moment, uh, to your person, in Jesus' name and precious blood, it it, be, it is behooved you to believe. I want to ask also, in my own place, can I believe my sins forgiven? comforting to hear this again and again, and to trust that God will carry in all phases of our lives. In Jesus, all, always bless his name. Amen.
Jos et ehtinyt hankkia haluamisia julkaisuja soviseuroista, voit tehdä sen täällä. Julkaisu myymälä sijaitsee myymälän vieressä Anttilan edustalla. Myymälästä löydät tämän kesän uutuudet, ajankohtaista kirja Minä vai Jumala, tuo näkökulmia uskovaisen elämään nykyajassa. Syntien anteeksiantamuksen kirkko kertoo vanhoillisen karjalaisten lähetystyön alkuvaiheista Afrikassa. Yksi 